Nūte purvas jāvasē atdhītau tritie vidathe man mašansī, asmē agnē sam vajad vīram vahantam, kšumantam vājam suapatjam raim dāk. Nūte. Now, nu is now. Interesting that the etymology is the same. Yeah, nunam. There is another word for this. Nunam and nu, and there is particle nu, which is an emphatic particle, which is always in post position. But when it is in front like this, then it is uh, this now. It's kind of emphasizing the event, the making it now. Here and now. <laughs> now in our minds, return on thy former safeguarding. Our thought has been spoken in the third session of the knowledge of fire. Give us the treasure with its children. Give us a vast and opulent plenitude where the heroes assemble. Mm. Uh, purvasya avasah adhitao. Adhitao is locative case. So in the adhiti, in the learning of the first, yeah. So literally, in our minds return on in our minds return on the former self guarding means um literally in our kind of recollecting in our reconnecting above with purvasya avasah these are both genitive cases of the first avasah he self safeguarding he is pro proposing here it's actually protection or it can be even better in a kind of fulfillment of filling from within from root of avatumam yes in the our mantra so in your in your te uh, first growth and fulfillment of ourselves remembering that or recollecting that first growth and fulfillment by you today now now see our our thought has been spoken in the third session of the knowledge tritiye vidathe manma manma is like mantra manman Yes, the carrier of man, of mind, the thought carrier. So our thought, our mantra was, has been spoken, shamsi has been indicated, praised, um, pointed out, um, focused upon, um, highlighted. Oh, this is the word, nice one. Our mantra, our thought, which carries the mind, was highlighted in the third session of knowledge. Third session of knowledge is an open in to interpretation, yes? Tritiye vidathe. Vidatha is a Vedic word from root vid to know, to discover. In our third discovery, in our third arrival at knowledge, most probably the higher part or the heavenly part or the more essential or the third layer of knowledge, you know, when we go layer upon layer, deeper and deeper into knowledge. In that session of the deeper third layer of discovery of knowledge, our thought is um, highlighted in remembering your first growth within us and protection. Asme in us, 
or fire, give us, she had been the translation, the treasure with its children. Um, some yad vira, interesting word. Um, vira, it's a, it's a bahubrihi compound where the children are co coming together. So give us the treasure with its children, brihantam, the vast one. Give us the vast and opulent planetude. Vajam planetude, brihantam, kshumantam, the vast brihantam and kshumantam opulent planetude, vajam, where the heroes assemble. Ah, some, some yadviram, where the heroes assemble, he put it the other way around. Uh, and suapatyam, svapatyam with treasures this is treasures vajam or raim sorry raim treasures where in the, the definition is suapatyam of the treasures with its children apatya um Shubindu has the whole article on this apatya and appa and connection of uh, ancient sanskrit vedic sanskrit to tamil because of appa and amma yeah? So he says we don't have appa word for the father, but we have apatya, the offspring. Uh, we have appas as the uh, waters, which are actually the seed to produce, to conceive. We have, um, but we have amba, hmm, very ancient word for a mother, which he thinks it is amma in Tamil. And apatya is the remnant from this root appa of the father. So suapatyam, that which has perfect offspring, arahim, the, the treasure with the, of the perfect offspring, which means that the perfect continuation in time and space, that the rai, the treasure will have continuation perfect continuation in the future dach give this is injunctive from ruddha simple form very ancient forms in vedic sanskrit it's actually ourest without argument which we translate as injunctive which could be translated as any imperative uh, mood or any other uh, modality injunctive can be translated in all possible tenses it can be present tense past tense future tense and any modality and imperative also modality so in this case give give us dach raim dach give us the treasure Suapatyam, with perfect continuation, with perfect offspring, Vajam, the planetude, Prehantam yeah? Kshumantam, which is vast and opulent. I think Kshumat abandoning in food, nutritious, strong, powerful, robust. Shibindu translates it as vast and opulent where the heroes assemble samyadviram so these are all definitions to the vajam and raim so raim is this vajam is the rest yeah? Raja, vajam is uh, samyadviram brihantam kshumantam vajam so one two three three different um, adjectives to vajam and suapatyam raim only one adjective to rai to the wealth Ragimil, hmm. this is a very uh, complicated thought here right here this verse can you please put it in a simple sentence because this children and treasure and um, you know third yeah. session what is the third session Right. Uh, 
nobody knows what is the first session. <laughs> but uh, in what is the second session? I believe the three sessions of knowledge or the sessions of knowledge is the discovery one by one. But what Burhugu did with Varuna, he discovered that Brahman is Annam, then Prana is Annam, then Manas is Annam. So it is most probably belonging to the mental uh, spiritual discovery that the mind is also the spirit. Yeah? The manma, the mantra is that which carries the mind is pointed out or highlighted. So the mind is highlighted on this level of the third discovery of knowledge. Thank you. Possibly. It's the most probable from what we know, what we know. Uh, and of course, uh, these terms are constantly used, so you have to get used to them, that the planetude can be uh, that where the heroes assemble, that the planetude is vast and uh, robust, uh, yeah, solid, Planetude is a very interesting word also, uh, which is used constantly in the Rig Veda. Nearly in every hymn you will hear about planetude. Sri Aurobindo found this perfect word for it because there are many other possible translations for Vaja. Uh, Vaja is from Vaj. From here we have Vajra. From here we have Ugra word. Huh? fierce. Uh, from here we have um, Vajas. Uh, but who are the heroes? Uh, yes, who are the heroes? Heroes are the souls who actually made the journey. Huh? who actually resisted the temptation of darkness to be settled there in some kind of um, agreement with the darkness, yeah? semi-agreement to have their own safety, who are the victorious souls who broke through all the obstacles and found their um, true origin. Yeah? And it is not an easy task. They are always talking about this, yeah, about these heroes, about these heroic souls who are in this constant battle. I read the other day that Mother says that we have only one battle and it is within, yes. There is this ongoing battle within. There is no other battle. Outside mm. battle is just a, something. Actually, to to see for you to better see how you struggle with it, yes, whether you are. so outside is an indicator for your outer consciousness to see whether you are really fighting properly within. Um, so these are the heroic souls who are uncompromisingly found the way to the divine, to the divine origin. Um, so there they are in that planet you, they all come together. You could meet them all, <laughs> all the forces of our inner being. Uh, you will recognize them, you will recognize their qualities, you will remember their uh, heroic deeds. Yeah? Those heroic deeds, they are patterns, they are the songs, uh, the... Um, the heroic stories or of the victories of our forefathers. They are like um, uh, like we have it um, in the um, archetypal victories of our soul. So to say we will have to overcome certain things which are applicable to all human beings such as fear of this, uh, you know, temptation of that, 
um, fear of death, fear of misery, of uh, defamation, of being rejected, of being misunderstood, and so on and so forth. So the list is very long. Yeah? Uh, and uh, if we overcome all of those obstacles uh, with our heroism, and heroism is a quality of the soul, huh? this quality of the soul is not so easy to to attain to or to get it 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 we get it through battles through long terms of reincarnations and battles and and uh, victories and defeats and many times we were defeated and we disliked ourselves in that defeat so we found another extra force and another step forward every time we fall we rise and continue our journey and that is something <laughs> we acquire over time and with that soul grows yeah? soul grows exactly with that journey and i believe even that uh, even in the varnik vision of four varnas the soul grows exactly that way it starts with being less determined or less self-conscious on the shudra level and then it goes into more exchange of the goods without knowing what these goods are really in service for the society vaishya level and then it grows to to the kshatriya he becomes a leader self-conscious being kshatram is considered to be one of the highest of the ranks you know, the royalty he becomes he has his own view on things he can lead others he knows where to go because he went through all those ordeals from before he was the servant he was the the provider of goods and now he can lead in accordance with the higher knowledge and then he becomes brahmana the one who gets the knowledge directly and seeks knowledge seeks the truth in everything and i believe that in each level when you rise higher you have you acquire the capacity of the lower levels so when you rise to the level of brahmana you can be kshatriya very easily you can be vaishya very easily it's not that brahmana cannot be vaishya or cannot be shudra he can he doesn't want he doesn't like it it doesn't kind of appeal to him because because he is looking for something else he's, he wants to spend his time differently lifetime he's looking for knowledge but if it comes to that that he must be one of those he will be perfect um, leader perfect vaishya perfect shudra and so on he should be that means he acquired all the other qualities why i'm saying all this because of these heroic souls that the souls are growing over time through this service through engagement with reality and acquire more and more powers yes. and these powers lead to that that soul to the knowledge yes. i didn't mean i was just thinking in fact throughout the day in our ordinary lives throughout the day we move through these four states you know there are yeah. times when we have to be like shudra of service yeah. you know to others there are times when we have to be brave and heroic there are in the day and then we seek knowledge so we put aside time for study so yeah. we pass through these states unconsciously and not so intensely maybe maybe in small little doses but i think the soul grows through every experience of it yeah i agree, I agree. by the way we have to be chaturvarnia at the end yes we have to acquire all possible the higher we rise the more we acquire possibilities to be chaturvarnia so on the level of brahmana it, when, when i see that brahmins cannot do anything as kshatriya or vaishya or shudra it kind of surprises me that means mm. there's something something not adequate with this you know, india has this problem of of uh, jatis of the caste system 
where the one, the higher caste refuses to do the work yeah. of the lower caste, which is surprising because it should be easy for them. They already acquired knowledge, they acquired the strength. So um, why to reject it? Yeah? But I notice that even lower castes reject to do the work of the higher. And yeah. they are very proud of what they do. You know, if you mm. are the garbage collector, you are proud of your own caste, that you are doing that, yeah? only that. Mm. And only that doesn't work in this world. Mm. We have to be universally built. Four Varnas have to shine through us, as Shubindu says, in the human cycle. Yeah? In knowledge, we have to be Brahmanas. In power, we have to be Kshatriyas. In, in, um, the, so in the exchange of goods and uh, services, we have to be Vaishya. And, and in service, we have to be Shudras and, and should be inbuilt in every individual. And so you're absolutely right. We have different uh, tasks. And Shri even says, we are never one. Yeah? There is no such thing as you are only this. Yeah? It's never happening. You have to do all four. Otherwise, you would not survive. It's not possible. You will have to do the work of four barbers. The, the speech was about this, the thought was about the preference of the soul development, yeah? who is Vira. So it acquires the qualities of a time. Of course, it doesn't drop those lower qualities. That's the idea. But it acquires new. It sees that the action is not done for the sake of, you know, exchange of pleasure only, or for the sake of serving somebody without knowing why and what for. So you acquire already knowledge, so you're looking for the meaning in the action. That means it's already Brahmanic look, yeah? You're looking for the meaning in everything you do, not just for the... the purpose or for the you know uh, income or for that it will give you some position not for that that is lower varnas yeah you're looking for the higher meaning uh, so every action has a higher meaning and it has to be seen and this is brahmanic look well i don't know it should make sense yes what i say <laughs> Yes, yeah. makes a lot of sense. Right, and it doesn't mean that there are no other issues, uh, no other meanings of this work. So the the work has to be used by others. The work has, has other purpose to serve other community, to help someone. All those are there, but they are not the only ones. Yeah. So you have the whole set of of. Um, of meanings in action. Uh, and in that sense, Krishna is saying very interesting, though he was Kshatriya, yes, uh, he says that uh, all the work is done for the sake of knowledge only. So this is something to think of. Yeah? Sarvam karmakilam partham jnane parisamapyate. All kar karma, all action without remainder, with no exclusion, is only to get to the knowledge experience. So we have to understand that, that we are here to discover the truth, mm -hmm. the divine truth in manifestation. Yeah? And that's why we act. We act only for that, to recover that real truth. Yeah? Well, I'm, I got carried away about this. Samyatviram, <laughs> Samyatviram Vajam. So those heroic deeds and souls, they are all there, but they are victories. We recognize the victories because they are similar, they are archetypal for all of us. I won this, I, I was victorious in this resistance, in that temptation, in this kind of dragging me down to 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 other reasons of action yeah and you can see that people have different reasons for action did you notice this for some people it is enough that because it it is just good yeah 
it should be done because uh, because it gives some income or uh, it it gives you more privilege in the future to be something more steady yeah? this is should not be enough for the brahmanic consciousness yeah? it is good but it is on the lower level of consideration i'm always struggling with this when i see the motivations of people their aims of action why do you do this for this only this is such a small thing <laughs> there must be something more than this don't you have the same thoughts why yes, do you it, do? Is, it yeah. is so important to have this knowledge that you are saying because then one can look at life so differently you know from up down you know you can see every action how you can be the vaishya the sudra at the same time the brahmana and the kshatriya because in that action then when you do it with this knowledge is very joyful actually yes when we are integral absolutely yeah. there is there is a freedom final freedom is there because mm -hmm. you can be anything anytime where what is required yeah and you are not restricted by the other oh you should not be this because you are only this no i'm not only this i'm everything so i have a right to know a right to act to to rule I have a right to rule over myself, can you imagine? And I have the right to exchange my delight with others and serve them. I have all these four major rights. And this is mm -hmm. the fullness of the soul. These are the four Mahashaktis, actually. Yeah? Oh. When they are manifested in the soul, yes. Maheshwari, Mahakali, Mahalakshmi and Mahasaraswati, here they are. And the soul is formed finally, and it can do anything. No, it should make sense. We are all, uh, we have only one knowledge actually for all of us. Yeah? There is no other knowledge or there is no other way of acting. So these viras, victories, heroic deeds, heroic souls come all together there, who overcame all the obstacles and found the meaning in life and action and this brahma and kshatram are constantly mentioned in indian tradition started from the rigveda brahma and kshatram the brahman hood and kshatra kshatriya hood the power to know and the power to act in accordance with the knowledge these two and then Vaishya, redistribution, service, yeah. You have to, to, to make it Vish interesting. Vaishya is from Vish. All the creatures, all the souls who entered into manifestation are in connection with each other. They depend on each other's exchange. It's a constant exchange of goods, delight, yeah. And finally, the service. The service just to give support to whatever action without questioning a lot yeah just doing it because it's needed service shudra yes kinshuk uh just uh, sharing two thoughts that came to my mind one is that in life divine sri aurobindo says that what is action at the lower level becomes knowledge at the higher level and vice versa. I mean, the two are not two separate things, but uh, at the higher level, the action becomes the knowledge, which is exactly what you are saying about Krishna's thing. The other thing that came to my mind is that you mentioned archetypes. So could it be that these heroes are actually archetypal beings within our own mind, whom we have to activate or we have to learn from? Uh, the, the heroes always exist and uh, they become effective when we have Agni doing his thing. Yeah, Shubindu even goes farther in the secret of the weather. He says that these archetypal 
beings, so to say, our forefathers, Sangiras, Rishis, are there still and always, still and always, you know, waiting to give their support to us as a rising being, as rising souls. Yes, We need the support because they got the victories for us. Now they know how to do it. They will support us in our victorious movement. So there's some an occult relations between us and Petris, yeah? or the, those who are there to assist us in our journey. And they already get got those archetypal victories, like Shunach Shepa is one archetypal victory, yes, uh, and so on. Every one of them has a specific name, specific kind of entry or specific um, overcoming of the obstacles, yes, which are considerable to overcome in our journey. So they are there, and whenever we come to that obstacle, they are ready to help us if we want to. If we are truly trying to overcome that obstacle, they will be there to help in an occult sense even. Yeah? So it's a something ongoing uh, journey which is supported by those Vedic uh, entities, Rishis. And most probably they are archetypal uh, for, for our group soul because they are the leaders of our group soul. Yes? Though they were embodied in the individual form, Vasishta, Vishwamitra and so on, but we read about them throughout the literature, did you notice? From the Rigveda onwards, they are everywhere in Mahabharata, Ramayana, Puranas. You just take any literature of any time and they are there. So what does it really mean? I was thinking about this before, long ago. How come that they are in Puranas and the Rigveda and Mahabharata and Ramayana? Hmm. The yeah, same eternal. position everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? So, so they are eternal. They are archetypal, yes. They are of that um, of Brahman, Swayambhu, yes. They are his powers. Or let us say they represent uh, the universal Purusha in his, you know, manifestation. They are needed here because they bring those, that knowledge which we need to have and those victories to us. And all those souls who are supported by them and overcame those obstacles are assembled there in that plenitude. That plenitude is a power. Planetude is a, such a beautiful word, which combines spiritual and physical or material content, yes? It's a substance of some kind, luminous substance with fullness, fullness of its own. So it can support anyone. It has its own, um, its own character power how would you translate even planetiot i mean as a meaningful word what is planetiot actually bountiful blessings <laughs> yeah bountiful <laughs> something uh, fullness of fullness of fullnesses <laughs> so Bloody, you see the, sorry me yeah uh, Kinshuk just said something that has set me thinking. Um, is that he said that action in the lowest becomes knowledge in the highest. Is that right, Kinshuk? You said action in the lowest becomes knowledge. I'm just trying to unmute. So, uh, it, yeah, I I had read about it in Live Divine. So basically. What appears or what is action in the in the lower world is knowledge in the higher world. The two are not different. That's what I was trying to say. Do you remember where in the life divine? I don't know, maybe 10th, 11th chapter, 12th okay. chapter. So because I'm trying to understand 
this action in the lower world, how does it become knowledge in the higher world? I'll I can get back to you and check up on this. That would be very, very kind of okay. you. Sure, no problem. Because I, if something gets into my head and I need to start thinking, it just stays bothers okay. me quite a bit. I'll I'll do that. I'll share with the group. Okay. okay. Thank you, Kinshuk. Yeah, sure. It has to be some sort of a transformation, no? Transformation. Can say I'll just reproduce the passage as I read it. So I'll, okay. I'll, yeah. yeah. No, each of these passages are so packed with deeper knowledge. You know, you have to dive very deep into these words and sentences. I feel. Yeah. Especially in life divine, it doesn't begin and end with one sentence. It goes into many sections hmm. of explanation. Well, one sentence is one page or something. Sometimes. Yes. It's like amazing. Yes. yes. That's why I asked. The Rig Veda is connected to the life divine, right? Sri Aurobindo? Yeah, I left here a little bit to discuss. This is a very <laughs> wonderful topic. Uh, of course, knowledge, knowledge in the lowest, uh, knowledge in the highest, and action in the lowest. But to come to the lowest, you need transition. You need Kshatriya first on the top for receiving the highest. If you're looking from up down, yes? And Brahmana is the one who brings the idea. The idea comes of what is truth and what is to be done. Then Kshatriya, the, the belt, the hands have to like get rays of the sun. They have to distribute the knowledge, make the action possible. That action has to be taken and turned into the exchange of goods and delight with the rest of the and that is something what Vaishyas would do the torso yeah so the head the mouth is the brahmana the belt the shoulders and the hands there's the race is kshatriya ruling holding giving taking action action from the highest point of view yes not from the lowest yet then it has to be redistributed, exchanged with the rest of the world, it has to go deep, far, bring all the elements and take all the elements, all the capillars, all the system of blood exchange, flowing to all the members, connecting all into one system. And then there has to be a support, unwavering support, yes. The support without questioning the, uh, so the redistribution of knowledge was like a pyramid, yes? Knowledge comes from the top, it comes to the action embodiment in the royal sense, and the uh, Rajas, Maharajas, the kings, they had the power to decide what is to be done and how. And then finally, the redistribution through the whole system of Vaishya. Vaishyas are people, actually living of people and then support service servants they have to support because first of all they totally trust the system they trust this has to be done there is no question of how and why they are not looking for knowledge they are looking for total support of what is decided from the top now in the gita when this system was demolished that's what Arjuna complains to Krishna. Why do you demolish this beautiful system? Because it worked not only in the embodied state, it worked also through the 
invocation of the souls in this family of Brahmins, only Brahmins were born before. Yes. In the family of Kshatriyas, only Kshatriyas are born. Kshatriyas of the soul, Kshatriyas, not Kshatriyas as a child who is totally God knows who. Soul Kshatriyas are born in Kshatriya family, soul Brahmins are in the Brahmin family. It was the system which worked. They had their own rituals, their cults. Yes, Brahmins were reciting the Vedas the whole day, making yagyas. And that old style, lifestyle, was attracting souls from the subtle world to come to that particular environment. They saw it. Oh, this is my environment. I have to be there. So I go there because I am ready to be there. Not because I want to have an advantage of the situation and to cheat on others that I am that and I am not that. Yes. It's not to appear to be that, but because I need that environment. So that system worked to Kshatriyas, Kshatriyas came, to Vaishyas, Vaishyas, to Shudras, Shudras came, whoever needed what. They found their environment because they were constantly repeating that particular, you know, action. Into the family of barbers, haircutters, his father was haircutter, his grandfather was haircutter, the whole lineage of haircutter. And every day he cuts the hair, uh, day by day in the community. So, of course, the soul knows where it goes. Yes. So, Ladimir, is that how the Gotra system was born? Yes, lineage, absolutely. Lineage is, um, Gotra is dead. <laughs> A little bit uh, older than this caste system, Jatis. And Gotras are still from the divine origin. What is your divine origin? Where you are coming from the beginning of time? Yes. Later it became like smaller Jatis and in, you know, caste system, Varnas. You don't use Varnas, you use Jatis, yes, and castes. Caste is, the, is not Indian word. So there are more than 2,000 plus Jatis in India now because of different mixtures of different types of Brahmins and Kshatriyas and so complex. Yeah. But I'm not about that. Why Krishna mixed uh, these Varnas, Jatis? Arjuna complains. Now, if you mix Jatis, we would not know in each family who is born. We would not know that in the family of Kshatriyas, Kshatriya is born. There can be a mixture. So there can be a confusion with it, that world beyond that the souls would not recognize where, who is, you know, so they would come to the wrong family. So uh, Vladimir, family, you're talking about, you're talking about Varna Shankara, that, that, that question. Oh, Jati, uh, yeah, Sanskar, uh, Jati's, um, uh, Varna Shankara or something it's called, it's mixing of the, or maybe it is called like this, but not in the Gita, yes. He doesn't okay. use Varna. Or maybe he uses. Okay, I can't remember. Wait a minute. Var Varna Shankara, that's what he means. That's what he says. Krishna, uh, Arjuna asks Krishna. Somewhere very early on, I think. Yeah, it's in the, in the chapter one. I can read this. Wait a minute. Kula dharmasya, jati dharma, utsadyante, utsadyante, jati dharma, kula dharmasya, shashvatah. So all the kula dharmas and the jati dharmas will be mixed up, or utsad, utsadyante will be um, rooted out. Varna Sankara Karakai, you are right. Varna Sankara Karakai, by those who make the mixture of Varnas. Dosha Eter Kulagnanam Varna Sankara Karakai, Utsadiante, and by them, the, all the 
Jati dharmas are uprooted and all the Kula dharmas, Shashvatah, also uprooted. Yeah. So why did this happen? Yes, and this is the question. Why? But first of all, it's the beginning of Kali Yoga. So yeah. the mixture of Varnas is um, needed for one reason. Later, Sri Krishna would say that it is for the sake of everyone now individually finding the connection to the Supreme. So the outer system had to be destroyed. It had to collapse for us to become Chaturvarnyas, for us to not to stick to one particular formation. So the time has come for individualist, individualistic age and subjective age. The time has come for the individuals to decide, even for women, even Shudras, even women, that's what he says, now will find me Krishna, the Supreme, in their hearts. What to say about Brahmins and Kshatriyas? This is the statement of Krishna, and that is the answer to Arjuna. So the time has come for individualization of connection to the Supreme, and not through the social structure, not through the social redistribution of knowledge, where Brahmins are receivers the priests of the knowledge then they give the indication to kshatriyas to the kings and kings listen to brahmins shubindu speaks about this system in india that's only in india that the kshatriyas the kings were listening to the priests the priesthood was on the top always so they received their indication yeah. yes yes are you unmuted? Sorry to interrupt so often, Vladimir, but no, this brings good. up the this brings up the question of has this age of the individual ended, and is the supramental bringing in the age of the collective, where there's a collective growth towards the divine? Right, collective is has to wait. We are still on the tr track of individualization more and more and more. And Shubindu interestingly describes that in this individualization and subjectivization of our now subjective age is that I find the truth, my own truth. Yes, and my own truth to find truly is very difficult. So I will go through layers, like through the session of knowledge one session of knowledge two and so on layer upon layer and i will make many mistakes i will take the truth for my subjective desires or my subjective preferences and dogmas and this is what happens now in the world you can see it everybody subjectively starts judging others with their dogmas with their preferences and the wars are starting because of this it's a very dangerous period of subjectivization but if we arrive at the truth my subjective truth then um, it will be very easily reconciled with anybody's truth yeah? there will be no contradiction and that is a new collective hmm. not collective on the level of consensus of the mind but collective of the recognition of the truth and that's why mother said when they came to her and asked her that they need some rules and regulations for reveal to to decide whom to accept and whom to reject because they have no indication who is who is to come and who is to go she said as long as there are no rules and regulations there is still a hope for reveal why because the truth has to be recognized within I cannot rely on the rules. If I rely on the rules, mental rules, that that is the old world. That's what Krishna was demolishing. He was demolishing the system of the outer, you know, conventional age. It became totally conventional, void of spirit. There was no truth in that system anymore. It had to be demolished. 
and collective mm. will come. Shirobindo was not very fond of the collective, I must tell, yes, what I know, how I understand, how I read Shirobindo. Shirobindo was always on the side of individual. Uh, and I can openly say this, it's everywhere. He says there is no collective without individual. Yeah? Individuals, and these who found this true subjectivism in themselves, found their truth, they build a new collective. There is no miraculous collective rising something because we are all good to each other. This will not work. Yeah. The much more individual work is needed for the true collective to come to. Makes sense, truly speaking. How else? We already did all kinds, but we can see some mysterious support of the nation's souls. We spoke about this the other day, yesterday. Eh? This rising second step of Vishnu, nationalities rising. They are giving the support to the individual true development. And this is the only dangerous zone for the falsehood, because there the falsehood cannot regulate people, cannot lie anymore. And that's why it wants to demolish nations. We, are, we, also, we also see a sharing of minds uh, by way of television, radio, internet, everything. That was never before there earlier in the world. A kind of group mind sort of emerging. It may be of a very low level at this point in time, but this group mind is definitely... Uh, I wouldn't say more than the individual, but its 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 raw power is more than that of the individual. You know, uh, so yeah. yeah, absolutely. Knowledge is available. Google, uh, there is AI. You can get yeah. all the information. Information is free. Get it. Take it. Yeah, if you can. So there is a new level of development. You're absolutely right, and there is this. Already universalization is taking place. You can be from any religion, any background, any language, and still you can tap into everyone's. Of course, the, the propaganda and religious intolerance is entering into this field also. And they try to frame our minds and justify their deeds. But this will be inevitable. It will be a kind of a transition, I guess, because the true spirit has to emerge. And once it is emerging, you cannot cheat it. You, know, you cannot. Mm. Yeah, it will be the judge of the situation. And it is happening slowly. People get their mind, you know, not in groups, but individually. Interesting. And then they are coming together with those who think similar. And then they see, oh, they think similar in this case, but very different in another case. And that becomes a zone of conflict again. <laughs> oh, we are not yet the same. Yes? Still mind enters because mind wants to have the same. Yeah. It doesn't want to be unique. It wants to be... Uh, not united, but what I can you same. It looks for the sameness, and we still be, be inhabited. It we inherited this habit from the past that we, if we are same, we are safe. Yeah? Yeah. We are not yet used to live in the diverse world. Mm -hmm. It's only soul can do this. Yeah? Soul mm -hmm. can enjoy living in the diverse opinions, views, uh, varieties of relations. But uh, mind cannot do that. It's too much for it. That's why uniformity, it, it, inf it imposes uniformity on us. Yes, we have to all believe this. And if we don't, then we do not belong here. We have to leave. So it creates rules. 
it's an old world it is dying out yeah but... because the mind is so rigid and so mental you have to break through the barriers to look beyond mind somehow <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and it is so demanding and so tiring. This mind, yes, very so, tiring. <laughs> and you have Nobody. no other tool. Yeah, it's always there. God knows. Go already. <laughs> Rest a bit. Yes, don't trouble us. No, it is coming and troubling. I remember what Sri Aurobindo said. You remember in this when he was liberated with Vishnu Bhaskar Lele. And finally, I was free from my mind. Yes. What a what a statement! Finally, I was free from my mind. <laughs> so no more minding. <laughs> you can choose any form of knowledge. Yes, you are not determined with your dogmatic thinking. Very nice. Yeah, we are listening. While you were talking, I was thinking this is the one of the big problems with the uh, organizations in in countries is um, the tendency to go towards uniformity and mm -hmm. to start making rules so that you know you you establish what you think is right and then make a rule and then everybody has to behave according to that rule rather than the individual being the the key factor <clears throat> and the only way that works is if as you were saying if we have a, a knowledge and an understanding working knowledge of the truth in us then our behavior becomes what is acceptable to for the good of the nation but we have to be we have to have the freedom to do that and if everybody's responsible then the country thrives and and this I see this is the the very an inflection point where we are right now in in the United States uh, because we've prized individualism so highly and it's and it's created tremendous abundance and prosperity and freedom in the country but I see now that there's a there's a real drive to try to control and to and this electronic technology we have now makes this quite possible and to me this is what is really frightening about it is um you know where where we where we can become a number and we can be monitored and we can be dictated to we can be controlled um so it's uh like you're saying it's a very dangerous time i think yeah, because of the subjectivism which is entering and people do not recognize true subjectivism from false, yes? Mm -hmm. False subjectivism when people claim, I know, yeah, they are wrong, I am right, we go right way, we are great, we will be great, we will be greater than others. It's all a false subjectivism, yes, can't be true. Because if you look from the inner truth, that the divine has to manifest in everyone in all forms in all varieties of relations it's much more complex than uh, than the mind can accept so the subjective kind of treatment of the others becomes dangerous and us was so successful exactly for that liberalism of the individual freedom it was lower it was vital it was mental whatever but it was freedom to choose, freedom to act, which which created the huge abundance and um, and, for, and really the new world, and what we have now in uh, as uh, what we call uh, democracy. Democracy is. Shabindo highly speaks about this. We should not belittle democracy. Many people try to say democracy is something fake, something not real. It's a great achievement where, as it was defined, democracy, where one person will not be afraid of another person. This is democracy. We are not afraid of each other anymore. This is a great achievement. It wasn't there before. 
but it is only a foundation for the next, yeah, for uh, much higher development. And if you lose now democracy with these two wars, and I think Ukrainian war is much more original and much more fundamental than Israeli war, though they are connected. Interestingly, this is one war <laughs> against democracy, against the future development of true subjectivism. Then we will be thrown into the false subjectivism. And then everything goes, yeah? everything goes from the top down. Whoever is there on the top, he will decide for us what is down, what is allowed. And there are countries who are already signing up for this. They believe this is much more efficient way. The one world nation? You mean? Is something like that? Nations have to be different. It's like interesting. The, the human unity is has to be with all different flowers. It's like a bouquet of different flowers. You know, there are roses there. There are lotus somewhere. Indian lotus, most probably. There are there are small flowers from the field. You know, these small blue flowers, Krishna's delight. They are also there in that bouquet small nations big nations all kinds of nations they create this wonderful different uh, fragrance flowers bouquet this what is the, the future and not uniformity not one government for all all nations are using one coca-cola and one this coca-cola franchising everything is a mental uniformity you know it's a, it's something which is still persisting in our mind, but we need to have full varieties of different productions, of different relations, different uh, anandas of life, yeah? Planitude, this is the word. <laughs> we need to have a planitude, fullness within the fullness, but not uniform, because it's not a planitude, yeah? What happens in in countries when you let everybody do what they do best, and they're free to do whatever the divine inspires them to do? Then you have plenitude everywhere. People take care of themselves, like Lao Tzu said. Leave people alone; they take care of themselves. Yes. They figure out a way to survive. They would be prosperous. More. And they'll be prosperous. Just don't make so many crazy regulations and laws. Absolutely. Yeah. He said, the more laws you make, the more lawbreakers you make. Right. And it is, sometimes it looks like it is created for that purpose. But we are, we do not know because our mind doesn't know. It doesn't know how to deal with all the situation. So it, it imposes rules, regulations, all this, and thinks this is the way to go. And it is, in a way, with this mind, there is only one way to go, the rules and regulations. So in a way, it's true for that particular level of consciousness. But a new consciousness has to emerge, and that will demolish this system. There will be recognition of the truth on a totally different level. On psychological level, I will recognize the truth. The truth is archetypal, you know. We know what is true for everyone. Don't we know what is good for everyone? We know. Do we need to know by rules and regulations what is good? <laughs> I don't think so. I've seen this in in um, in an organization that I was involved in, where I was um, I was an officer, and um, there's a there was a tendency of people to want to make rules so that they could make sure that there was control and order and that and the objective of that was to satisfy in their own mind so that things didn't get a go awry you know and get out of control but if you let everybody if everybody knows what the rules are and you leave everybody alone uh, because of the impetus of the organization, everybody did what they did best. 
and um, there was no disorder at all. But that's not how some people think. A lot of people, many people, think that if you leave things alone, there's going to be chaos. Um, and I think that comes from their own internal um, problems, yeah. you know, with their own upbringing, their own life, that if they didn't have absolute <laughs> firm control over things, then everything blew up, you know, went everywhere. There is even so, something more than just leaving people alone. There has to be a goodwill attitude. Yeah? So I remember, you know, Reville, when uh, when we were accepting people, new people, and our entry group is the most difficult group in our Reville, yes? I do not know. The best people go there to work, and they become the worst group. So the person told me that we have to know who, who is coming to us. We have to, and he did this gesture. He took the ism. We have to see what is there behind. And I told him, why do you need to see what is there behind? There can be, the old world is behind with all the false things and all the um, misdeeds and all the trying to make things work. And you want to know all that? You really want to dedicate your time instead of trusting the person looking for the best to the future and supporting the development of this person into the future you want to look into his past and to find their false things and then what and then to reject the person because of that what happened to it in the past so here we have a dilemma yeah what do we do we all come from the past we all come from the wrongdoings all of us whether we want it or not we thought wrongly we misjudged we did the wrong deeds we did wrong judgments it's inevitable because we lived in that setting but what we will do now what will happen today what will happen for tomorrow from today to tomorrow this is the question should we not support person with and I know this for sure, there was even psychological hmm, exercise, and maybe here I will stop for today. But this is interesting that uh, I most probably I mentioned this, but it was shocking for me that um, they did the experiment in the school. Uh, the two hmm, psychological, what do you call it, um, a consultants, uh, educational consultant people came to the school, they went to the classes and they came and they said to the master, uh, schoolmaster, that mm, we are very surprised but these two kids in that class, they are above average and somehow they have lower marks, they study not well, and they left. In one year they came back, these two students were on the top of the class. What does it tell you actually? That's attitude. What you project, what you expect people to be, they become. Can you imagine if we expect everyone to be the best? What will happen to us? <clears throat> this is goodwill. We find only the good in everyone. There are many things which we have to correct, and it's very good to hear this from the friends. Correct this. This is wrong with you. But then you have to have a good will inside yourself and inside the friend who tells you. If you have a bad will and somebody tells you you have to correct, you will be offended. You will go into the fight with the person inside yourself, maybe not outer. So this, this change, this shift is fundamental for us all. We have nothing to lose here, really, nothing to gain. All our gaining is next to zero. <laughs> Look at the end, life is going on and it's coming to the end. So what did we really gain from it? That's why Mother created our avail. And it is in such a havoc, look at our reveal, <laughs> what is happening there, <clears throat> like in the world. Great. Okay, we can stop here for today. Sorry to be over time again. 
somehow every time I'm one more time. Let me close. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Very so much. Discussions on this modern. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kashchit Dukha Bhag Bhavet Om Shanti 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 Are you? Mm -hmm. Namaste. Mm -hmm.